Helping your fellow man from the comforts of your couch seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, we don't like to think that we would help someone in distress, but time and time again, research shows we don't. New specialist Andrew Wittenberg is here with a special interactive report on the bystander effect. Get Facebook and Twitter ready. We want all of you at home to be part of this story. We'll be asking you some questions and we'll show your answers live on the air. Whether or not we realize it, we've all seen examples of the bystander effect. Psychologists say people are less likely to help when more people are around. And tonight, we're putting Utahns to the test as well as out of towners to see if the crowd holds them back or if they jump into action. Our hidden camera investigation begins on a cold January day in downtown Salt Lake. The outdoor retailer convention is in full swing and our actor, a KSL producer named Matt, is ready for his chilly assignment. He poses as a sick person on the side of the street and we'll see how long it takes for someone to respond. During our first scenario, our actor is slumped over near the steps of the Salt Palace and within seconds a group of OR attendees walks past. They all see him, but keep right on walking. Okay, everyone, here's our first interactive question of the night. We want to know how long do you think it took for someone to stop and help our actor? Our camera focuses on this woman, Chelsea Tilly of Toronto. She stops before crossing West Temple. Our actor increases his calls for help. I don't feel good. I was just worried because he was like twitching on the ground. Tilly thinks about it for a minute and two seconds. <sighs> While we watch what unfolds, psychologist and University of Utah professor Dr. Paul White gives us insight into what's going on in her mind. She's made contact with him, and so that's why she may be looking to see is this a place where help is needed. And so as soon as one other person comes over, you see then she comes over. She finally stops Ooh. after seeing another group about to approach our actor. Uh, uh. I'm, actually, I'm actually totally fine. We Work spill the beans on what's happening and confront our would-be so, Good Samaritan. That's okay. Sir, so we noticed that she was like looking at him. I like, thought he was having a heart attack. But besides her, no one else like stopped to ask if he was okay. So we were gonna walk across the street and just ask him and then maybe call for help if he needed it. Where I'm from, there's homeless people. She said she hopes others would stop and ask if an apparently sick person needed help. But with this experiment, most did not. Next, we move our sick man to a place where we'll find more Utahns, and later we'll throw in a curveball to the equation. First, our actor dresses in jeans and a sweatshirt, then in a shirt and tie. Log into Facebook and Twitter and tell us if you think he'll be treated differently. With the bystander effect, the negative side of it is people don't help in these situations. We witnessed the bystander effect for a number of minutes until this man in the blue sweatshirt thinks about stopping. Right on his heels, a trio of ladies stop immediately to make sure our actor is okay. Are you okay? I'm, I'm I think we all kind of noticed the person at first, and then we all kind of made the consensus that we should see if that person was okay. For those of you keeping score, a full five minutes went by before the women stopped. One of the big factors that people talk about is this idea of diffusion of responsibility. It's not my responsibility. Someone else is going to help. Here's the curveball. Our actor changes clothes into a dress shirt, tie, and khaki pants. Let's see what happens now when the person in distress looks like an upstanding businessman. In 45 seconds, it's a homeless couple who are the first to respond. Hey buddy, you can't possibly tell me you're homeless. 30 seconds after we've set up again, this woman walks by, stops, looks back, and then keeps on walking. Fortunately for our ailing actor, Mary Woodhead is around. She admits the reason she stopped was because of how strange it looked for a businessman to be sitting on a sidewalk. But he was very still and he looked completely out of place and I looked, I started to walk away and then I went back and thought, you know, that's really weird. Let's take it to the next level. When do you step in if you witness criminal activity or do you stay away altogether? Time for our next interactive question. When are you not allowed by Utah law to make a citizen's arrest? Is the answer A, you witness a crime being committed, B, you have reasonable belief a person has committed a crime, or is it C, you may only perform a citizen's arrest on someone you know? The answer is coming up 
right after this. More snow moving in tonight. How much will you get? Your forecast is coming up next. Welcome back. Before the break, we showed you part one of the bystander effect. We rejoin news specialist Andrew Wittenberg now with part two, and make sure to keep social media close for this KSL interactive story. Thanks, guys. The answer to our citizen's arrest interactive question, when are you not allowed by Utah law to make a citizen's arrest? The correct answer is C. In the state of Utah, you are permitted to make a citizen's arrest when you witness a crime or if you have reason to believe a person has committed a crime. But be careful. If you turn out to be wrong, you may wind up behind bars yourself. Our next scenario tonight involves a crime where someone could have made a citizen's arrest and keep your phone or computer close. Another interactive question is coming up. Salt Lake City's intermodal hub. It's a bustling interchange for thousands each day. We lock a bicycle up early in the morning and wait. When the crowds come, our actor begins cutting away at the lock with a hacksaw. Similar to our last two experiments, a lot of people seem to notice what's going on and the passengers we met on the platform say they would confront our actor. I'd do whatever I could to stop the person to do it. I wouldn't want my bike stolen. I'd probably ask if you needed some help with something just to kind of start up a conversation. But that wasn't the case when the rubber met the road or blade to bike lock in this case. First, two minutes go by, then five minutes. He's still sawing away. We get the picture. No one's stopping. Next question for everyone at home. How many people reported the crime? We're able to cut the bike lock multiple times and walk away. No one said a word to our actor. Some we met say there's a chance the actor might not have been stealing the bike at all. I would trust people and think, oh, that's his bike and he forgot his combination. <laughs> Let's go back to Dr. White. He says this is another classic example of the bystander effect. And again, that's the diffusion responsibility angle, I would think, there, because you've got the police, you've got UTA security. There are other people who should be watching out for any criminal activity, and they may interpret in their minds, if he's doing something illegal, someone else is going to stop him. All right, for our final experiment, the answer to our last interactive question, guys, the number one. One person reported that crime happening to authorities, to UTA security. The takeaway here, if you do find yourself in a situation, Dr. White says the best advice is don't just say, oh, I need help. Someone call 911. Say you in the green jacket, I need help. You in the purple tie call 911. Assign that responsibility and people are more likely to help. The same goes if you report a crime. Don't just think that someone else will call 911. Make that phone call yourself because I, our research shows that not a lot of people will. Clearly, that was that was interesting that was stuff. Thanks. Good yep. job, Andrew. Thanks.